Hello there. We are reaching the end, or so to speak, for the house save here. We have, uh, well, I believe just four races remaining. Rebel has a very slight advantage of 16 points. And Magnuson has a little bit of an advantage in the driver championship. But of course, we're going to go for getting both titles over the course of these last four races. So currently, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go through those, try our best to win. And honestly, I do think that we have a decent chance of making that happen. It has been a long time coming, but today we are going to wrap up this series. And uh, we'll have to see. Maybe we start something new, maybe not. I already have something new in the cooking, which is the maximum weight thing that we'll be doing with Alpine. But it's good to be back on this uh, little bit of has hard adventure. It's taken probably way longer than it should, but finally... We are seeing the last chapter here. So currently, I want to have a quick look at where our car is compared to the Red Bull. And uh, let's face it this way. Our car is very, very good. Red Bull is still fairly close or so. They are the top speed, uh, best team for high speed. They are second speed. Second, ugh, they are the second team for medium speed. Apparently, I forgot how to speak this morning. They are the third best team for low speed. They do beat us in top speed, but... Uh, Eh, it's not by much, and let's face it, we have a very significant low speed advantage, we have a decent medium speed advantage, and their high speed advantage is very, very, it's very, very small, let's be perfectly honest. So, the cars are probably quite a bit in our favor, particularly on low speed uh, cornering tracks, which Mexico kind of is, and uh, hopefully here, we'll be able to start off with the bang, retake that lead in the championship, and work from there. So we're starting off here with some engineer tension between Slade and Hulkenberg. And as usual, we'll try and intervene. I feel that is eh, genuinely what most the teams would do. Try to solve their differences as amicably as possible. We'll go for fastest lap. We'll go for getting both cars into Q3. And we'll, well, basically just both cars into Q3. Talking a little bit safe here, but I do feel like that is the financially responsible thing to do. Although, to be fair, you'd probably make a ton of money anyways. We are luckily not going to get rain this race weekend. We're going to have it for practice, but everything else is looking good. So, let's just jump straight into the Mexico here, see what we can do. So, we actually do have a bit of a decision here that we probably should make at this race. And what I mean by that is, Hulkenberg is struggling a little bit for car parts. The ERS should be fine. But the gearbox here only has one with 64% remaining. It's four races and a sprint. I don't think this one is going to last until Abu Dhabi. But we might wait a race or two with taking a penalty. See if we have a bad quality, for instance, either there. But uh, potentially they're going to need an extra gearbox engine. I think we'll be fine. Again, you lose about 5 to 6% usually in a race weekend. Uh, provided, of course, that you switch between practice and quality, which we are doing. So I think we'll just be, be just about fine for both cars. They we're probably going to hit the 50% uh, mark around Abu Dhabi. But I think it's going to be worth it to just stick with what we have. We don't really have a lot of cost cap remaining. So we can basically buy one engine for each car and a gearbox. And then we'd be uh, out of spending money. So that is the current situation here. But for now, let's get qualifying done. And we'll see where we stack up for the start of the Mexican GP. Turn three. So, Quali has presented us with a red flag, and that is a... That's a pretty bad hit for Sainz, and potentially... At least Gearbox gone, I think. Maybe RS took a walloping as well. But yeah, that is a pretty harsh hit for uh, the Ferrari driver. And as to see if Verstappen has yet to set a... Uh, Time, Alkenberg fourth, Magnuson first on uh, their first runs. Let's see what we get here on the second one. And everyone is just going to have a singular chance here to set a time. So Verstappen might be in a little bit of a uh, little bit of trouble here. He's actually just going for the run immediately. And what I mean by a little bit of trouble, he uh, did get his confidence. He's not going to get a second high confidence run. Neither are we, to be fair. Bye. Uh, that shouldn't really be much of a big deal. This is a very short track, so by the time both Paris and Verstappen are done with their laps, we can basically send our cars out for a final run. So 
It's looking good here. Let's see what we're stopping him do if he can actually uh, take the ball. He can't. Fifth best time. And I'm thinking we're going to actually go out behind Leclerc. Hulkenberg, who needs to improve. We'll send him out before Magnussen. And I think we're actually in a good spot here. We're not going to get held up much, if at all. Verstappen could potentially go out for another run if he was quick. But he's opted to stay in. So this is very, very good news for us. If Hulkenberg improves now, then we might be able to uh, cause a little bit of mayhem. Yellow sector 1, green sector 2, green sector 3. Small improvement. Not enough to uh, improve position, unfortunately. But I think we can be happy with uh, this. Magnus the Stars pole, Leclerc second, Perez third, and Verstappen fifth. However, I do believe Leclerc has a bit of a penalty here. So he's actually going to be starting further back. And we're going to basically be starting, well, side by side with a Red Bull for both of our cars. Now, in terms of strategy here, I'm a little bit unsure what we want to do. We could go with a very basic uh, medium into soft soft for instance but once it's not raining here i feel like every time we've gone here lately it's been very very rainy could do a cheeky one stopper i don't think that is really going to help if we're going to do it it's going to be more like this anyways so we do a light medium into a aggressive or even full attack hard that's probably going to be faster this could be a very cheeky thing to do in my honest opinion but because we're running such a long light stint of 45 laps, we're probably going to suffer a little bit of confidence issues from getting overtaken. So maybe not the maybe not the best option there. Instead, we could try something like this, where we run attack on the medium and the hard tire. Then we go into a soft one. It's going to be about 8 seconds quicker than one stopper. Of course, depends, of course, if we can actually do good pit stops. But I think the easiest thing to do here is just run either medium or a hard tire for that matter as our first stint. Then go into one or two soft stints to just keep things eh, kind of at a high pace. And as you can see, this is already 22 seconds quicker than base strategy. It's 3 seconds quicker than this one. And uh, 11 seconds quicker than the one stop. So this is probably what we're going to do. It also gives us a little bit of wiggle room where we can actually attack at the end of stints. That is going to be, uh, well, fairly fairly nice to have. It's not going to be a you know, huge game changer, but it is going to make the stints even a little bit quicker than what is estimated here. So we'll be going for this. It is it, probably, again, just a very basic uh, strategy around this place, but it'll get the job done. So with that in mind, let's jump straight in. We are going to be starting first and third. Let's see if we can have a good start versus the Red Bulls. So Red Bulls are going to have the inner line, we're going to have the uh, outside line. That's a hard tyre on Paris, that's going to be fairly interesting. Uh, that's actually really interesting to be fair. And Paris has fallen behind Russell, so... Yeah, Red Bulls really losing out here with Paris and Russell, but both of them are running hard tyres. So Noda's running a hard tire. We have three hard tire running behind us that might actually end up being a little bit of a uh, blocker here for Verstappen. That could allow us to more easily create a gap to the Red Bulls, get a little bit of time, get a little bit of a time advantage going to that first pit stop. So that's not bad. It also tells us that we could have gone hard tire ourselves and probably be fine. And Magnussen has already created a one second gap to Hulkenberg. Now we just need Hulkenberg to do the same to Paris. Uh, while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and explain a little bit here about the ERS balances. There's been a couple of comments on some of my videos saying that I should not really use it. It slows you down. And that's not necessarily wrong. The ERS balances will generally be a little bit slower than not having it on. And the reason for that is actually really, really simple and straightforward. The ERS ballasts allows your driver to use a part of the battery for attacking, defending. Basically, it's a very minor automation of the battery. But it also is going to allow your driver to recharge when they have possibilities of doing so. So let's say that you're running one two like we are. Keeping the ERS ballast on is fine. Because once they get to two, three second gaps, they'll be taking a little bit of a uh, little bit of time, slowing down a little bit, recharging the batteries themselves instead of you micromanaging it. And of course that's gonna lose you time because you're running slower. Now 
they will also generally not be completely... Let's face it, they're, they're not going to be perfectly efficient with how they use the battery. If you want to micromanage it, you are going to save race time. But if you want to kind of just leave it... Leave it for the driver to deal with, recharge, things like that, you can toggle it on. But as I said, you're going to be losing a little bit of time. It's not anything major, it's not seconds per lap or anything like that. It's maybe a tenth of a lap over the course of... Not even that. So yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with not using it, there's nothing wrong with using it. It is what it is. So Alvin has a bit of an incident here. Just a light touch on the Alfa Romeo. Luckily nothing major there, but yeah. Sorry for that little rant about the uh, battle assist. I like it. it it does make your job a little bit easier, but if you want maximum efficiency out of your ERS, you are going to have to micromanage it yourself. Kind of like, it's basically the same as setting up your own strategy rather than picking the pre-made ones, in my opinion. But yeah, so far this race is going very well. We have 8 seconds down to Russell, Paris, and Verstappen. Let's see what that is once we actually get to our first pit stop. We're about to get started on pit stops here. Hulkenberg has just entered the pits 14 seconds out of Paris, so we have a fairly sizable gap here. And as you can see, most other cars are also starting the pit sequence, so I don't think we're going to be losing out too much here by pitting potentially slightly early. Hulkenberg comes out in 8th, has a 4 second gap here up to Stroll, well 5 seconds now. So it's not a bad time to actually pit. It actually is a really good time. We have a gap here. Cars are going to be pitting, they're going to kind of filter out that way, so we don't have to do too many overtakes. So I don't think we're going to be, end up losing too much time doing the the pit stops in this way. And to be fair, Olkenberg is going to need to get his tires up to temperature. And uh, you can kind of see here that uh, he didn't have the best pit stop. Let's be honest. Magnussen is going to end up in the middle of right straight up in a train again. We're just going to give him the deploy. And for Alonso Ocon's roll, all of them are going to be pitting soon. Same for Paris, Verstappen, Hamilton. Everyone ahead of us is going to be pitting before too long. So we might get a, an overtake or two here. Just build a little bit of confidence for Magnussen. Hopefully we can do the same here for Hulkenberg. But it's going to be it's going to be helpful. It's been a very, very good first set of stops. By the time Red Bull finally decided to do a stop here for Paris, we'd already caught up with them. Or Magnussen had. As you can see, Magnussen is currently basically already a full pit stop ahead of Verstappen. So this is looking incredibly promising for us. The upgrades seem to have done their job. Let's see what we end up with here as the final result. So far, I think we're going to have pretty smooth sailing for the rest of this race. As things were going well, Magnus decides to make things a little bit more interesting here. Uh, actually, completely parking. Okay. Did that count as a crash? So or did Magnus actually hit a back marker? I guess the back marker hit Magnussen, because Magnussen had a spin, as far as I know. And... There was... That looked pretty bad, but at least Magnussen makes it interesting, but I don't think we actually suffered any damage. Like, a damaged confidence is one thing. But I don't think we actually suffered any car damage, so... Yeah, looks like we are still very, very much fine. But, of course, we did lose, uh, basically almost all the advantage that we had gained. Take a look at last lap, 19.5. This lap, a 39 and a 23.7. So, Magnus an incident cost him about 11 seconds and it cost Hulkenberg 4 seconds. So, makes things a little bit interesting here. I still have uh, faith though that we are going to be able to turn this into a win. Paris and Verstappen should also both need to pit again. So we're still, we're still fairly secure, I'd say. We're getting closer to the end of the race, and we do have a safety car. Luckily, both of our drivers are fine. As Bottas and Albon, I assume, has had a bit of a coming together. And service says yes, they have indeed. With Albon taking the brunt of that, and Bottas still being able to run. But that is going to make the end of this race. Potentially a little bit interesting. Um, we've elected to stay out. We probably could have gotten the cars in very quick here. But it's equivalent in terms of tyres. I think that we're still kind of safe. So I think it's going to be okay. The safety car restart here is going to be a little bit interesting though. And as mentioned, we may be 
just cool. maybe could right. have pitted here, but it would have been it would have been risky because well we needed we needed 15 seconds, we had 14, so at most we'd get one car in ahead of the Stappen, the other one behind. Now would it have been better to have fresh tires potentially, but we don't know how many racing laps we're going to get here before this safety car actually does end. So, five laps remaining at this moment. Let's see how many we actually get to, uh, well, that we would have gotten to take this up and, or keep our position. Lap cars may overtake, and they've done so. There is three laps to go, meaning that we're only ha going to have two laps of racing here at the end. That's not going to be much. So, while pitting probably would have been safe with fresher tires and everything, I still think that just staying out would it is, you know, the better choice here. That's exactly what we've done. And uh, let's be honest, if we stop and finish third, Paris six, we managed to one two here, we're going to be extremely happy. So let's see how this restart goes. Hopefully, we don't have a lockup in that train. That would be horrendous. And Verstappen is already launching a bit of a t bit of an attack here. He is going to be very aggressive. Let's face it. That would be uh, surprising if it wasn't. But the restart has gone well so far. We have maintained our position, and we are creating a little bit of gap here to Verstappen. And I think potentially also on this final lap, we might end up snatching the fastest lap. That's going to be the the hope at least. Now, no DRS as you can see. So uh, that's going to be a little bit of a, uh, that also would have made it a little bit di more difficult to overtake. But I think we have created a bit of a gap here now that we are somewhat safe. Yellow sector one again. Are we going to get a purple sector two? Nope. Yellow and yellow. So no fast lap for us, but we are going to go one, two. This happen is going to go third. Paris sixth. And that does, I believe, put us ahead of them in the uh, championship, so we'll have a quick look at that. And with that one too, we do score a decent chunk of points. Red Bull still do score a bunch of points, but we gain 19 points on total, if my math is correct. And if we take a look at the drivers, almost 30 points now in favor for Magnussen. Hulkenberg gets his first race win of this season. At the very least, which is at least is uh, at least a little bit of a positive for him. And in the constructors, we now have overtaken Red Bull with three points going into the last three races of this season. I think it's going to be fine. As you can see, Hulkenberg had a bit of a pit stop error on that first stop. That did eh, put him in a bit of a bit of a negative uh, position compared to Magnussen, but he did make the best of it. He did end up getting himself a bit of a race win. Our inspection has failed on the rear wing and the underfloor for car one. And for car two, it's just the front wing. But we are going to try and make sure that we do have parts available. We are has. We do We do struggle with making these parts. Let's be perfectly honest. It's going to be a little bit of a little bit of an issue. But I think we're going to be fine. We already are manufacturing chassises. I believe we're manufacturing new chassises. We didn't actually have these available for Mexico. But uh, this is going to help close in the gap a little bit where, with Red Bull. We're going to overtake them in high speed. Going to get a little bit more gap on the medium. The engine cooling, not going to really matter this late in the season. But the top speed boost is going to be nice. It's not going to really beat Red Bull, I believe. But it's going to be something that we can potentially have going into the next race. The second chassis is going to take 10 days, however. So I think we are just going to have to give it to Magnussen. I think we need to just give him the every every bit of advantage here to secure the championship. Driver tension here between Hulkenberg and Slade has been solved. That's going to help on the confidence going into Brazil. So let's get that right into it. Qualifying for Brazil has completed. And as you can see, we have set up 1-2. Now, the Rebels, on the other hand, had a bit of a miserable uh timeout. Perez being the best rebel at 6th and also eating a penalty and what's even worse is that Verstappen went out in Q2 at 14th and he too is going to be eating a bit of a penalty here so neither of the uh, rebel drivers really most likely going to be able to po pose a threat here as the weather for the sprint 
might be moderate rain to make things a little bit more interesting. That could potentially also cause a lot of uh, trouble for us, but we'll have to wait and see. So remember how I said this sprint might be very, very interesting because of uh, the weather? Well, as you see, by lap 10, we might end up getting a bit of rain here. Gonna have inters for the final half. And as such, I think we're just gonna go full on attack on the soft tires from the get go. I think that's gonna be our best bet. We could go mediums here just to play a little bit safer. That might actually benefit us more. The difference between the medium and the soft tires, let's just take a quick look at that before we actually make a final decision. The uh, soft tires have about three tenths advantage degradation wise. They keep that advantage for 15 laps. So for the sprint here, the softs are going to maintain the advantage for the entire thing. But the question is just how much do we want to... How much do we trust the weather? Do we trust this weather forecast enough that we go softs? Or do we want to be a little bit safer on the mediums? Softs should be fine until lap 12. The rain should come lap 10. It's a bit of a gamble. I think we go with softs here. Like, we... we We'll be fine. Either or, really. But going soft should be alright. And if we need to, we'll go a little bit lighter on them. We are starting 1-2. Red Bulls are both going to eat penalties. We can take a little bit of risk here. Although we probably shouldn't. It's more fun that way. So let's jump into the sprint here. And let's see where we stack up. Once we actually do get to the rainy period. So rain has begun here. And it did arrive earlier. Well, basically it arrived when anticipated. But the water on track is probably going to build fairly rapidly here. The last lap is built by about 40 millimeters. So next lap we might need to do a bit of a double stacking. I don't think we want to do any pit stops this lap, however. It's not really going up fast enough for that. And uh, the Red Bulls should be fine here. But what I'm thinking is that we're going to allow Magnuson to go in first on the Inters. And let's face it, it's just... It's just a very, very few laps here, 16. So he should be fine with just uh, going full attack. Same as what Hulkenberg is going to do. So let's get these Inters on the car and see how we uh, how we stack up here. As Magnuson is now coming out in what should be a net first. Science and Leclerc ahead of Perez. Let's see just how much punishment Hulkenberg is going to take it from staying out a little bit longer than he probably should. At least a couple of seconds. And uh, can he beat the Ferraris out? That's going to be the big one. It's going to be close. Just about behind. So unfortunately, probably would have been better to double stack, to be fair. But uh, the risk there of getting a, a run, an error during pit stop is quite high. So what we're going to do with Hulkenberg is just recharge, get prepped for an attack on the Ferraris, and then uh, try our best to get an overtake done. We have a yellow flag. Hulkenberg has been uh, able to recharge. And it's Hamilton and an Alfa Romeo. Slight tap on the back there with the wing. But yeah, Hulkenberg here now is getting into a position where we can try and launch a bit of an attack. We're gonna push him up. Tires are overheating here for both cars. That's not really that much of a surprise. But we might want to turn him down to aggressive because the overheating here is kind of kind of bad. Like it's uh, it might dip down very aggressively there to degradation. And in Magnus's case, we don't really need to push too hard. So that should be okay. For Hulkenberg, we might just need to tune him down to both do another set, do more recharging, but also that the tires aren't being completely cooked running behind these two Ferraris. But as you can see, we are we're still struggling a little bit with getting the overtake done, even while we're pushing everything that we have here. So, we are going to back off and recharge and try another attack once we have energy and once we have the fuel, tire heat, everything a little bit more on our side. We're getting started with the last few laps here of this sprint, three laps to go. And with that, Hulkenberg's last chance to overtake the Ferrari is basically upon us as we are getting very, very close to the back there. But. So uh, we're just lacking a little bit of extra oomph to get this done. So I think we're going to go ahead 
give Hulkenberg a little bit more risk taking and if the worst comes to pass we'll just buy a new gearbox here and uh, work from there. Verstappen has made it up into 8th position, could potentially make it up to 6th, giving him a few more points. We'll have to see how that pans out. But unfortunately here, as you can see, Hulkenberg can't really find a, a good avenue to, of attack. And that is our biggest issue with wet weather. Like, we are quicker than the Ferrari somewhat, but we just can't find a good, uh, a good line to take to actually get the overtake done. And that is a little bit troublesome. But honestly, this camera is pretty nice to watch. I do enjoy it. I know that some people feel it... Um, for some people, it feels nauseating. So if you're one of those, I do apologize. But we're going to be watching this final lap here for Hulkenberg at this angle. See if he maybe, just maybe, can use the final little battery he has left on the straight now to get signs. And he's actually pulling away, so... Not really, uh, not really likely, unfortunately. But yeah, Magnussen is going to win the sprint. Verstappen is still stuck in eighth, so penalty-wise, this could work out for our advantage. We'll have to see. Bit unfortunate there for Hulkenberg that I did screw him over with the uh, with the pit stop. Pitting him earlier probably would have been more beneficial, but uh, I was a little bit too hopeful. A little bit too uh, too stubborn and wanting to do something a bit different. But yeah, Sainz, Perez, and Verstappen all taking penalties. Hulkenberg is going to be uh, pushed up to third. And uh, I think he'll be able to make a bit of a comeback during this race here. Where we are going to have pretty nice weather. So we'll just do a... I guess a pretty standard run at this point. I think we might actually try to start on a hard tire. I think that could be fun. So... Let's see what we can do. A two-stopper is on the menu. Is this going to be quick and viable? Somewhat. Six seconds quicker than the strategy that we were having a look at. It's basically the same as this strategy, just being a bit more aggressive on the medium. And the other thing that I did want to try out here was going go for a hard and then onto the two soft tires. And in terms of time here, it's a tad slower, so... I think what we could do, if we want to be a little bit cheekier, is maybe start on a soft tire, go alive from the on the first stint. We are starting very far forwards, and then we could potentially here go maybe for just a standard medium into a light or standard soft. And in terms of time here, it's going to be around the same as you can see, but. Uh, it might be better just because of the fact that we are going to be able to pit a little bit earlier with, or a little bit later with that, so we don't get too much stuck in traffic. But I think I think we're just going to go here for the medium into two light softs. It just seems to be the better option, and if we do have an incident where we say lose a lot of tire because we spin, lock up, or whatever, we do have mediums available to us because it is a sprint weekend that we can then switch on to. So. Well, we're going with a very, you know, basic, pretty standard uh, strategy here of attack medium into two light softs. I think it's still the best option for us, and that is what we're going to go with. A fairly uneventful Brazilian GP is no longer fairly uneventful, as Hulkenberg has had a bit of an incident. We have, uh, well, broken tires, we have a destroy gearbox, ERS, and engine. And we also have a chassis, front wing, and suspension that has uh, been absolutely destroyed. I don't even know where he is at the moment because this is Hulkenberg's camera angle. That's the scariest part. He has actually entered the Shadow Realm by the looks of things. But uh, I assume he has run wide, hit a wall, or something along that line. We are going to get a bit of a safety car here. And Leclerc's had a pretty amazing race so far. The question here now, with 10 laps remaining, is going to be a very, very simple. Is it worth it for us to pit under this safety car? It's going to be a 15 second stop, most likely. And Magnussen then would come out behind both Verstappen and Sainz. That's the, that's the least we can expect. Now the question is, is it worth it to go onto a soft tire? 10 laps remaining. We could potentially get a triple overtake. It's going to be very, very risky. 
whichever we do here. I think, honestly, for the fun of it, let's have Magnuson go in, go onto a soft tire, and we can try and get at least quickest lap, and maybe second, or maybe even first with this gamble. So that's what we're going to do. I do feel like it's worth it, and other cars might end up hitting as well. Here. Let's have a look at that. Let's see here. Max Verstappen here. Verstappen versus Hulkenberg. Close to each other. And the contact between the cars, inevitable. I'd argue that Verstappen squeezed him a little bit too harsh in that first corner, like uh, Hulkenberg was completely off the track. We'll have to see if uh, race control agrees with me though, but to be fair, probably just a racing incident. We'll have to we'll have to see that what we end up with. So Noda, Piastri's in the pits, we're also in the pits here. Plus Let's see time. here what Magnussen can pull off. Verstappen does get a five second penalty. And we have a clean stop. So we're going to come out most likely here ahead of Paris. And that is going to be the key here. And we are coming out ahead of Paris. Verstappen with a penalty and a virtual safety, uh, sorry, a full safety car. That's going to hurt him quite a bit. He could fall pretty drastically down the rankings here. But. Both the Rebels are actually doing a pretty good job of recovering from where they ended up. Uh, basically from where they ended up. After the penalties. Sorry. Thinking. So, well, was, they're probably going to end up outscoring us here. Unfortunately, with Hulkenberg getting taken out like that. And we're going to have to take penalties for Vegas, I think. I don't think Hulkenberg has any even yellow engines left. But we'll take a look at that after the race. For now though, we're just going to speed along here until we get to the restart. And hopefully then, with the tire advantage that we currently do hold, we can get a few quick overtakes done. Let's see how long, how many laps we're going to have to do just that. Lap cars may overtake. We are currently on lap 67, 66. So we're going to have about 5 laps here to try and make something happen for Magnussen. Who is going to have to do 3 overtakes here on cars that have... 50-ish medium tires. I do think the pit stop was a good choice. We'll have to see though. But, but as mentioned, I think this is going to be uh, probably worth it. Let's see what Magnus can pull off with fuel, tires, everything. A few laps in now till the end. Let's see if we can uh, get signs here immediately. And we are quite a lot quicker. But getting signs immediately is potentially a little bit too much to ask for, and our confidence isn't at a level where I think we're going to go ahead and uh, full send. Probably not on this lap, maybe starting next lap or the lap after. But going high overtake aggression with uh, confidence at that level is would not be good. And if we do crash out here, that is going to hand Rebel a... Uh, Potentially a season win here on a silver platter. So I think what we're going to do is just wait a little bit more with the uh, the energy. And try and launch an attack once we actually do get the DRS at this next lap. I think that's going to be key. Science is almost out of the DRS range to begin with. No, sorry. I had it in the wrong. I don't lead instead of interval. Science is not even close to getting out of the DRS range. But I can hope. Okay. The RS has been enabled. We're going to deploy here now. See what we can do with uh, the back wing open. And so far, not enough. So I think we don't have any choice here but to go a little bit higher up on the risk taking for our overtakes here. And that's what we like to see. Magnuson sends it down the inside, gets at least one of the cars. The question is just, can we get the, uh, the other two cars in now with a little bit of energy trouble? Copy. Now, if Verstappen overtakes the Ferrari, that's actually not the worst thing to happen for us. Um, because this is going to happen. Like, Verstappen is going to be a good little, good little blocker. And he has a penalty. So us sitting behind Verstappen is not necessarily a bad thing either. But we do need to take the place proper. Before we can relax. And Leclerc is currently still fighting it. Sends it down inside. Kind of the same that we did. Still in it though. Magnuson not giving up. Kind of like Magnuson. Uh, Magnuson MO. 
never giving up, no matter what kind of risk you have to take. And we do send it straight past Verstappen as well. That is very, very good. And I think that might have settled it. So, the pit stop did benefit us. It did look a little bit shaky there at times. But Magnussen is back up to peak confidence with those overtakes. Verstappen, how much of a gap is he going to be able to create it to the cars behind? And he's going to fall down to potentially 8th place here. So, that's going to sting. And Magnussen! To be fair though, I don't think it was worth the crash, but uh, that is going to sting pretty pretty harshly there for Verstappen, the punishment. So yeah, he falls down to 8th as expected, 12 points then from the Red Bulls, we score 26. I'd say that's an acceptable recovery. I think Leclerc would have won this race if not for the crash, um, to be perfectly honest. So maybe? This worked out for the better. Honestly, it's a weird thing to say, but it might have worked out for the better points-wise. But uh, we're going to have to take a bit of penalties here for Hulkenberg at the next race. And that's going to that's gonna be a little bit of painful. But yeah, Magnus extended his gap in now, 56 points to Verstappen, which means that he has won the World Championship. Unless my math is off. So Magnussen has become the Haas uh, World Champion. We still have... Uh, Constructor is still somewhat open, 24 point lead, 2 races, anything can still happen. So let's go ahead and now and have a look at Hulkenberg's, uh, Hulkenberg's damage, let's put it like that. So we're missing car parts, we've also failed with the front wing, the side pod and the suspension for Magnus's car. The rear wing needs to be replaced, the underfloor needs to be replaced, the Suspension is just gone. Front wing is missing. And the chassis now. I think by the time we get to Las Vegas, we are going to have the, the new C8 chassis for uh, Hulkenberg as well. But as I said, the engines are gone. We're going to have to get new ones. And, uh, well, cost cap is going to be a bit of an issue there. And if we take a look at the ERS, that's too gone. The gearbox, we actually don't have a gearbox anymore. That is usable. All of them have hit zero at this stage. So we're going to have a look at this. Uh, this once we get to Las Vegas. Cost cap wise, 8 million is what is estimated remaining. So we have just about enough money that we can actually buy. We can actually buy those new components for Hulkenberg. So uh, yeah, bit of a... Bit of a frustrating one, I'll be perfectly honest. But we're going to go ahead here and just buy that gearbox right away. Because we're going to need to to go into the race weekend anyway. So we're also going to need to get that chassis replaced. The question I'm going to have to ask myself here is, do we want to manufacture any more components? We are currently getting a chassis, an underfloor, a couple of, uh, another front wing. So I think we'll be fine. But worst case scenario, Abu Dhabi might be a little bit scuffed. We'll see. For now, though, we're going to get ready for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. So, as I mentioned before, we are going to have to do a little bit of investment here in terms of getting, well, a new engine. All the, well, at the very least. We're also going to be eating a new ERS here, which means that for Hulkenberg, he's going to be eating every single penalty available under the sun. And that is going to, that's going to harm our chances this GP for him. Now, for Magnus, then he has 60, 52, and 87 on his parts. He also has spare parts for practice. So he should be fine for the last two races here. But for Hulkenberg, yeah, we don't really have much of a choice other than to just eat that. Basically, eat that damage. That's the best way I can describe it. Eat the penalty that we are being given. And we're just going to have to be happy while we do so. There's no other way around this. And, uh, well, we'll just have to deal with it the best that we can. Let's see how qualifying treats us. Pretty bad qualifying comes to an end here as Magnussen just got completely shafted by everyone in every single run. And the best way to describe this is that his teammate is almost a full second quicker than him. So yeah, Magnussen had a pretty bad time. We're going to have to do a bit of a, a, bit of a recovery drive here. And uh, potentially this could make Abu Dhabi a little bit more interesting. Now, Hulkenberg did finish uh, or qualify in the first spot. There is a bunch of penalties here, so he's not going to be starting, hopefully, at the back of the grid. We'll have to see exactly how 
harsh his uh, suffering is going to be, I think it won't be as bad as we maybe thought. 19. Okay, so slightly better. Ever so slightly better than what the expectation was. Which, um, yeah, doesn't say much really. In terms of Magnus then, because he is starting further back, I am tempted to do a little bit of a cheeky strategy here by going hard first onto the medium. It should be fairly decent. Uh, honestly, I think it's going to be uh, okay. The only other option here would be to just forgo the hard completely or go hard into, you know, two, set, two soft tires. Which could be viable. But the thing here with uh, Las Vegas in particular is overtaking is going to be an absolute nightmare. So maybe not. Maybe that just isn't what we want to do. I think I think the one stopper is going to be our best bet. We go medium to or hard to medium. Just go full on attack, do the best that we can. The gradation shouldn't be super bad. And if we need to, we'll just switch to strategies as we go. Now, for Hulkenberg, I'm actually thinking of doing a two-stopper. He is starting 19th. He's going to be very limited in what he can do, particularly early. So I'm thinking doing something like this, where we go soft into the hard, into the medium. Could potentially pan out rather well. We'll have to see if this actually does end up working, but... It's a risk that I'm willing to take here when we are starting at the back of the grid anyways. And again, we kind of had to because, well, he didn't have any components for anything. So we might be in a tad bit of trouble here this uh, this time around at Las Vegas. And potentially Red Bull here is going to get back into the fight if they have a good result. But we'll try the best that we can here to mitigate damage. That's going to be the goal. Let's see if we can actually achieve that. We're all ready to go in Las Vegas. One in Red Bull. Where's the second one? Right there. So they're starting both pretty high up. We're starting behind one of them. So we'll, we'll have to see here. If we can, again, just make something happen. Now, pretty bad start because the fact that we are on the hard tire. Verstappen and Perez just has a bit of a fly here. Medium and soft tires, respectively. Sonoda up in second. That could be good for us. That might actually slow things down a little bit. And Hulkenberg has unfortunately not been able to do anything really on those soft tires so far. But hopefully it can build a little bit of confidence. And then we can get started with uh, kind of cutting through the, the grid here once we've done our first pit stop. But now though, we're just going to try our best here to improve our positions. And we'll see where we stand once we do get to that first stop of this race. As it turns out, we might be in a tad bit of trouble here because Deg is currently slightly higher than anticipated, even on hard tires, and that's going to be a bit of a bit of a concerning problem. Now, we are doing our first pit stop. Bottas is pretty far behind everyone else, which is going to throw a little bit of wrench in our plans. Same here, really, for the Alpha Tauris and the other Alpha Romeo, but everyone else is kind of running in one big cluster. That's going to help out, and Magnussen has actually done a great job here. Got himself up into second place, is currently fighting the Red Bulls, and uh, could potentially at least snatch some points off them. So it's still looking somewhat viable. We are going to turn him down to aggressive though, because again, as I said, deck is higher than anticipated. We don't really have a lot to go on, even on the mediums. So at this point, we just need to kind of take care of our ties a little bit. Running with the Red Bulls is kind of acceptable in that regard. So that's exactly what we will do. Volkerberg attacking, catching up to the cars in front is going to be key. And by the time everyone starts pitting, we want to tr hopefully, hopefully, I made his way back up to Norris. And currently, as you can see, we're running at least three seconds quicker or thereabouts to the cars ahead of us. So clearing them quickly is going to be key. The first pit stops have started happening right now. And Perez, interestingly enough, comes out next to. Uh, Hulkenberg. So we do have a little bit of work ahead of us to get things done here, honestly. And Magnussen is going to have to pit, hopefully on this lap. I think we're a little bit past the yeah, we're a little bit past the pit uh, entry. But Hulkenberg's strategy here is kind of working, seeing that we are currently with Paris. So we should, in theory, be able to gain a little bit of pace here. You know, catch up to a lot of cars. 
hopefully get a little bit of gap created before we do pit for our final pit stop again. But that here is a bit of a concern. It's not going to be long until we do our second pit stop. So yeah, it's not looking too amazing in my honest opinion. But we'll do the best that we can. This Magnuson now comes out a little bit behind us again. But we'll do the best. Uh, we'll do the best that we can here. But as I said, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult here to get Hulkenberg into a high scoring position. But it is looking at least a little bit promising at the moment. So we're getting increasingly closer here to Hulkenberg's uh, final pit stop. And it does unfortunately look like... We're not really going to get much dividends here, as you can see the gaps down aren't too large, let's put it like that. And if we take a quick look here at the expected time consideration, 20 seconds is what we need for a pit stop. That's going to put us down by Hamilton and Piastri. We definitely need to come out ahead of them. I think that's going to be the key here. So Hulkenberg needs to have an incredibly clean pit stop. Magnussen is kind of struggling here because we have to take care of the tires. Most other cars around us, well, basically everyone does not. So we'll have to see if we can maybe get something done later on. Unfortunately for us, Hulkenberg here does come out ahead of Hamilton and Piastri. That's very fortunate. And hopefully now we can chase down the, the train ahead all the way up to actually full place. So Hulkenberg here might actually have uh, turned into a bit of a decent strategy for us. Might, been, might be a little bit better than I anticipated, but we are going to be kind of required to recharge at the moment. Maybe try and get away from Hamilton to chase the uh, the cars in front would be good. But we're going to recharge, we're going to catch up to them, and then we're going to try and make our way up to, throughout this DRS train that goes all the way up to fourth place. You can take a look now. So Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg has just fought his way back Your into the points again. Currently it says he's ninth. But that was the overtake on 10th place, Norris, and uh, so far it is looking good. Magnuson is somewhat falling down the order though, and that is worrying. We're trying to get a little bit uh, back up. At least we're going to go for fourth place here. But yeah, we're not having really a good time for uh, our boys here. It's eight laps remaining. Tires are a bit of a concern. We are getting to the point where the hards are going to be better, unfortunately. But we still do have hopes for at least fourth and fifth here to kind of alleviate damage. And that's kind of going to be the key. Can we catch this happen? Maybe. But it's going to be very, very difficult, I think. So for now, we're going to allow Hulkenberg to just kind of settle in here, recharge a little bit. He is fighting Gasly at the moment. But we're going to need energy to attack on the last few laps to, as I said, try and secure fourth and fifth. Magnussen kind of is in that same position where we do. Would actually be happier with being the second kind of DRS train while recharging. So we'll try and get that set up for the last few laps and hopefully secure ourselves at fourth and fifth place here. As that's, that will still be plenty for uh, Abu Dhabi, hopefully. We're getting increasingly close to the end here, three laps to go, and I think this is when we're going to have to make a ch uh, kind of a choice here for Hulkenberg. And if we're going to have any chance of catching Leclerc and uh, Verstappen and fighting for that podium, we're just going to have to go full attack from this point on. And that's going to put us a little bit in danger from Alonso if we aren't careful. But I think it is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and deploy. Try and break the DRS here also to Alonso. That's going to help Magnussen a little bit to uh, hopefully get his position. But currently, Hulkenberg is going to have a bit of a hard task to catch up to Verstappen and Leclerc. We did, however, do quite a good job here. 36-6 versus 37-9, 37-5. So it is on the table, potentially, that we might just barely catch up to them. Now, Magnussen, his tires are basically about to say bye-bye. Hulkenberg is maybe going to be able to launch an attack here at the on the last lap, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be a very very close affair. And for Magnuson here, we're just going to start deploying a little bit, try and defend ourselves. And uh, Hulkenberg Stop has gotten within range, so we'll try and manage him. And maybe just maybe we can get one of these cars. For Magnussen, it's kind of the same deal. Try and manage. Oh, that looked like Hulkenberg actually crashed, but that lost us a ton of time. So that's going to that's gonna hamper our efforts quite a bit. Magnussen still looks to be safe. Fuel is uh, the main concern with Hulkenberg. And unfortunately, I think that the hampering was enough that we're not going to be able to launch a bit any, any sort of attack here, unfortunately. 
Or maybe, just maybe we will be. Salkenberg is on the back tire of the Ferrari. If we had a little bit more energy, then maybe we could have done something. If the Red Bull wasn't in the way, while well, we're going to sail in between. Three wide. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are the ones that lose out in that three wide uh, situation. That could have been a pretty bad crash. Paris ends up winning. Leclerc at least secure second. Verstappen third. We get fourth and fifth. So, not the worst. Uh, not the worst race here, all things considered. Magnussen did a decent recovery for where he started. Hulkenberg did an even better one. But a uh, bit disappointed that we couldn't get Leclerc and Verstappen at the end. But yeah, it is what it is. Maybe we should have put Magnussen on the same strategy. Could have worked. But... Uh, yeah, that put it a little bit of wrench. It still means that we do have Drive Champion. The Constructor is the one that we're worried about. And there's just seven points between our cast this time around. So let's see if we can get it at Abu Dhabi. It's going to make things a little bit interesting. We did also fail here to do the finish position streak of a car in the top three. Every single of the remaining, remaining race weekends. So that's a little bit disappointing. Inspection failed for the sideboards. We are fine. We have just about enough components to make our way through the uh, through the final uh, final race, and the cost cap is predicted that we will break it. But let's be honest, I think we'll be fine. Projected cost is 34, 134 million. Current is 132. We have one and a half million remaining. We're gonna have a breach here of uh, less than half a million. So nothing to Nothing too serious. Apparently I need to sponsor a man. I do love that I got a warning about the cost cap two days ago and they decided that you need another warning today. I will sponsor Pepper Martin or Pepper Marty. But yeah, Abu Dhabi is now looming over us. Let's see what we can do here. And honestly, we just need each car to beat their rebel rival. I think we can do that. No penalties this time around. Ultimo is going to be starting uh, fairly high up the order. I do have faith that we're going to qualify well here. We just need to have a decent race. We've had yet another red flag in quality. And this time it is not the Red Bulls. I think. It looked like it was Sainz. If I saw that correctly. And yes. It was indeed Sainz just locking up at the first corner. And hitting the wall so q2 things are looking good so far we are probably through i would think we just about managed to get our runs done before the incident and that should make uh, things pretty straightforward here i do believe only four cars are going to go out and i doubt any of those four cars are going to be us The final qualifying run of the season has been completed and Magnussen takes the front row with a 21-9. Unfortunately, a pretty bad run here from Hulkenberg on both of his attempts. 5 10 slower than his Q2 run and 6 10 slower than his Q1 run. So he was still basically poised for pole, but couldn't perform in Q3. Verstappen is actually eating a bit of a penalty, which is going to make this potentially very, very interesting, depending on what kind of penalty that is. And Paris is going to be starting fourth. So we're doing a front, front row lockout. And then we'll have to see exactly how far back uh, Verstappen is. But he's most likely going to catch up fairly quick. And still be a bit of a uh, bit of a troublesome customer. I guess it's the best way to describe, well, the current situation. Now, in terms of what we want to do for strategy, I'm very tempted to just start on the hard tire. And go soft, soft. I think that could be good. Now, the thing with Abu Dhabi, however, is that it's very, very likely that we're going to have a safety car, a virtual safety car, or anything of that sort. We're also very likely to crash out ourselves, for that matter. So we do need to kind of be prepared for that, but I think doing this would be okay. Should be just about fine. And the only other thing that we might want to do here is potentially start with a light soft. As that would allow us to be up to temperature, we could we'd be able to run for a long time. Should create some decent gaps. This is still going to be slightly quicker, but it's basically just a question of do we want to pit early? Do we want to pit late? But I think just starting on the hard here makes more sense for us. It's going to allow us to... Well, there's two reasons why I want to start on the hard. 
it's going to allow us to go as long as we can on the first stint while still running an aggressive strategy. That is number one. Number two, it, this strategy allows us to save a medium in case we do have a safety car. We have so many soft tires available for both cars. We have three of them. So to, using two soft tires with strategy and then getting, say, a late safety car, a red flag, we have a soft tire available. I want the medium tire available just so we have a little bit of flexibility if, say, we get another get hit with a safety car, lap 34, 35. So, yeah, we'll try and save the medium for that, try and play it a little bit safe. We have seven points to go on. We are starting in the better position here in one, two. So, as long as we win here and, say, take third. Let's see, if we win, we get at least seven points. So, we have 14 points advantage. Uh, Yeah, we just need to win. Let's just make that simple. I'm not going to go through the maths of it. But Rebel needs to beat us by 7 points. They can do that by winning. Let's be honest. So if Verstappen wins. Because I'm going to put my faith in Verstappen. Or Paris for that matter. If Paris wins. If a Rebel car wins. We need 2 third to be on the safe side. That's how simple it's going to be. So with that said. Let's see if this might be settled by fastest lap. That too would be hilarious. But yeah. That is actually a possibility. Okay, I think we're ready. We're going to go very, very aggressive here with the hard tire. We are starting 1-2. Should be able to block off anyone. And is that actually the Red Bull in the back? Or is that the kick? No. Verstappen starting 7th. I just had a... Uh, I was just hoping. In vain, clearly. But yeah, let's see here. Paris starting on a soft tire. Which means that he's going to... If we stay with him, we're going to benefit from starting on the hards. So, it's not all bad. We're the only hard runners early on. But, uh, I think we'll be fine. I do think that we, we we have this one in the bag, provided we stay on the track. For now, though, we're going to speed up here and see how we look by the time we get to that first pit stop. We've just been overtaken by both Paris and Verstappen, and they have established a bit of a gap here, which is going to be quite detrimental to us, potentially. But... More importantly, we have created gaps to the cars further down the grid order. And if we can have a good pit stop here, that's going to help out tremendously. We're probably going to pit around the same t time Paris does. And let's face it, hards aren't very good around this place. So as long as we can kind of use our hard tire to stay somewhat with the Red Bulls, I think we can count that as a win in our book for this first stint. Unfortunately for us, anyone that could hold up a snap and uh, didn't do so. And Alonso even had an incident where he locked up and got sent to the back of the grid. So, fate not really on our side here in slowing down Verstappen, unfortunately. Now, in terms of the first pit stop here, we are getting fairly close. And I'm thinking we're going to be pitting the first car of ours now. And I'm a little bit unsure who I want to pit. I think I'm going to pit Magnussen. We're going to get him in first onto a light soft tire. And Paris should be pitting any time as well, probably next lap. Let's see exactly where Magnussen comes out here. He comes out in 11th. A little bit of free air as soon as he clears Hamilton. So it's not a bad place to really come out. And we are going to go ahead and just get Hulkenberg in here immediately too. So we're going to put him on light. We're going to do the last couple of corners here. And Magnussen already doing a bit of an overtake as Perez is now pitting. Unfortunately though, Magnussen not going to beat him out. But uh, he's going to come out next to Hulkenberg. And I think the goal here now is just going to be to beat Verstappen out. As Paris has gone to a medium tire, that I do believe that we'll be able to catch up to and overtake by the end of this stint. So Verstappen has just done his pit stop. We're up into second and third at the moment. So if things stay as they are, I believe we are somewhat safe. So it's not all bad. But yeah, Verstappen has pitted. He's gone into a soft tire. He has done his medium stint, so he's probably just going to go soft, soft. Kind of like we are. So if we can keep him behind us or at least stay with him, things are looking good. And Hulkenberg is already chasing down uh, Paris here, but did have a bit of a slower lap time last time around. Same can be said for Magnussen, but did get kind of held up a little bit. But yeah, we have our plan. Let's see if we can actually execute it. So unfortunately for us, we've had a bit of an incident here with uh, Hulkenberg. Verstappen has once again... Pulled, uh, eh, maybe this is Hulkenberg on Hulkenberg, honestly. I don't even see contact. Like, why did you stop there? 
that's going to make things a little bit more challenging as the confidence has taken a huge hit. It's going to damage the pace quite a quite a bit here. And 1-2 for Red Bull means they win the championship here. So let's see what Verstappen Hulkenberg, no penalty I assume. Yeah, that's just a bit unfortunate. That's the best way I can describe it. But we're still in this. It's just going to be a little bit more frustrating to deal with honestly. So let's see if we can catch up. I think we will. But Hulkenberg's low confidence here could potentially be uh, a pretty bad Achilles heel. So we'll have to try and manage that as best as we can. And as said here, if Verstappen wins, we are going to need most likely a second and third. As Magnussen decides that he too is going to cause us a little bit more grief by locking up and ruining his confidence a little bit as well. So yeah, we're not in a, not in a great spot at the moment. Halfway through this race, driver errors might be what undo is our undoing. Magnussen content continues the trend, runs a bit wide. He's now 10 seconds behind uh, third place, second place here. And that might actually put a lot of pressure on Hulkenberg to actually win this race for us to win the Constructors. That's the, that's the saddest part about this. So Magnussen, who has been doing well so far this season, is not really... Not really having a good time here and the question then becomes do i want to go soft tire or do i want to play a little bit safer and go with the medium tire here till the end we could do that for magnuson and what we could do here is just go medium stay light and then attack at the last couple of laps and that might actually be more beneficial now soft tire medium tire the difference is just a second so i think at this point we are gonna for magnuson just put him on that medium tire it is going to benefit us more towards the end. And we might do the same here for Hulkenberg in a few laps time. So honestly, I think we would just go full attack here for him. Try and close that gap a little bit to uh, to Hulkenberg. And luckily this time, it doesn't seem like we are the ones that crashed. Crash. Hopefully. It is Hamilton and the Williams. So, side of relief wasn't us, honestly. And yeah, we're going to just go ahead and push with Hamil uh, push with Hulkenberg, see if we can catch up to Verstappen a little bit, go onto that medium, and do a little bit of a gamble here. As Magnussen is going to come out in 10th behind Leclerc. We need to get that overtake done fairly quickly. We have a lot of free air, so it looks like Hulkenberg is going to come out in a good window here. Probably ahead of, uh, well, he's going to come out way ahead of Leclerc, might even come out ahead of Russell. Signs if we're lucky. Now that he is uh, getting ready to pit himself. So let's see here. We're just going to stick to the medium. We're going to try it. And I think, as mentioned, it might be the best option. It's going to allow us to attack towards the end of the race. So let's see what we can do here. Verstappen 2 will be pitting soon. Paris will be pitting soon. Both of them are going to go into a soft tire, I assume. But if we just take care of our tires, we should have a little bit of an advantage come the end of this race. As Magnussen gets the overtake done. On Leclerc. Hulkenberg should just about beat Sainz out. That is actually exactly what we needed. Now we just need to try and stay ahead. And if we need to, we are going to use ERS here to stay ahead of, uh, of Sainz and get this uh, kind of job done. Best thing here would actually be to catch up to Norris and get a little bit extra pull from there. But so far, things are looking very, very good. Very, very good now. We might do a little bit of a comeback. 22 seconds currently behind Verstappen. And how are we looking here in terms of the time consideration? 20 seconds. So we need to gain at least a couple more seconds before Verstappen jumps in, which might be this lap. And he does, in fact, jump in this lap. Don't really have anything we can do here for Hulkenberg to speed things along. But we are going to jump Paris pretty significantly. And Verstappen does come out about three seconds ahead of us. But even then, I do think that we can chase him down. And Magnussen isn't too far off Paris here. Verstappen, Paris, both of them go into soft tires. That is going to be a little bit concerning here. But also, a lot of the cars, Norris, Sainz, Stroll, and Russell, are going to pit and get out of the way. So we don't have to do too many overtakes. Hulkenberg, at least back up to high confidence here. So uh, it is looking better and better as we go right now. Maybe still we can get something done, but it's going to... Depend highly on how quickly Verstappen destroys his tyres. There is currently 10 laps to go here and we have opted for going full attack because we don't really have any choice of this matter. I think the tyres will just about make it. Maybe we started a lap too late here. 
But last lap we gained a second on Verstappen. Looks like we're going to gain another second this lap. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of harvesting. Make sure that we have energy for when we catch up. And if we take a look here. 24 blank. 1.4 seconds gained that lap on Verstappen. Magnussen is doing well as well. Gaining about 9 tenths on uh, Paris that last lap. So both of our cars are currently looking like they will be in a position to potentially challenge uh, the cars in front. Although Hulkenberg here is kind of losing time because we have been recharging. 25-4 versus 25-3. Turn off the recharge and I think he will catch him by the end of this. But as you can see, tire life is a concern and will most likely go below 30%. Particularly for Magnussen here, so... Might just have to, might just have to gamble a little bit harder than I maybe like here to get this done. Hopefully, Rick here will actually end up giving us DRS. I think we're a little bit too far behind for that. Maybe. Nope. Hulkenberg does get DRS, and that's going to help with catching catching Verstappen here. That's actually kind of huge. But yeah, the main concern is going to be tires running out, and it does seem like they are going to be doing that. But. At this point, we, at this stage, we don't really have a choice. We need to catch them, and we need to try and launch a bit of an attack. I want to get to the back of Verstappen here as quickly as I can. So we're going to allow the usage of fuel. We're going to allow the usage of uh, energy. And that should hopefully help Hulkenberg here to close that gap a little bit. And uh, we are kind of going to have to. We're going to have to give us this everything we got. And same here for Magnussen, but as you can see, even he is kind of struggling at this point. So it is going to be difficult. De Vries, I think, gave Verstappen a little bit of DRS there. Just two laps ago, very soon, well, three laps ago now. Hulkenberg is losing out right now. It's looking like, like the, the little bit of an incident that we had might have actually settled this before we'd like. But Hulkenberg is going to have one chance, at the very least, to do a little bit of attacking. Two laps to go. I think what we are going to have to do is just try and get a little bit of energy in our system for this lap. So we're going to stay within DRS. We're going to harvest, and we're going to try and attack with damaged tires on the next lap. And that's all we can do. Tires are very close between both drivers. But, again, nothing more we can really, can really do here. And we're going to put the overtake aggression too high. No way we're not doing that. For Magnussen, however, he has also caught up, but it did cost a lot, mainly fuel. And managing both of them might be a little bit painful here, but we'll see. Done the last lap. Both cars here. We need at least one overtake. Hulkenberg pulling off the overtake would be amazing. But he is running damaged. Uh, well, not damaged per se, but low durability tires at this point. It's going to have a bit of a rough time with it. We're going to try into this first DRS zone to just get it done. He does pull it off. But can he stay ahead for the rest of the lap? That's going to be the big one. For Magnuson, we're going to try into the second DRS zone, I think. That's going to be what we do with him. But Hulkenberg getting the overtake here now is actually key. We just need to pay attention now that we don't absolutely... That we don't run out of fuel. We're going to still keep the ploy on. We're just going to use everything we have. And I did focus a little bit too much on Hulkenberg here. But Magnussen does look like he might just get the move done as well. We are at risk now, however, of running out of uh, fuel for Magnussen. Sorry, not running out of fuel. Getting a puncture for Magnussen. And that too would actually end this. So maybe just maybe we pushed a little bit too hard. But Hulkenberg is going to snatch the victory. Magnussen, can you hold on for 15 seconds with those tires of yours? He does clutch it. <coughs> Sorry, been yelling a little bit too much. So my voice is a little bit gone, but yeah, that was a... I was worried. I was genuinely worried. That was an amazing last lap for both of our boys. And we did use a bit more tire than I'm comfortable with, I'll be honest. But basically getting both rebels on the final lap. That feels good. Probably shouldn't have skipped that though as we were celebrating the uh, Constructors win. But yeah, Hulkenberg wins the race. Very, very important that we did. 
Magnuson third. He is the world champion. And for the constructors, we do beat them out by 18 points. We gained 11 points on them here. So let's be honest. If Magnuson had uh, had uh, you know had a puncture here, he probably would still have finished in the points. So it wouldn't really have mattered too much. But if he had had a puncture and crashed, then uh, well, it, it would be a 15 point swing the other way. That could have been pretty bad. I think that would have made us. That would indeed have made us lose. So. Very, very clutch there from Magnuson that he managed to hold on there with potentially ties that could have punctured. So yeah, it did work out to our advantage. Was it closer than I would have liked? Yes, it was. But we did end up uh, completing the uh, the Hass Hard Challenge here. A bit later than I would have liked. And uh, we'll be continuing kind of completing things. I think the next thing up is going to be to just finish up the Alpha Tower speed run. And going into the summer here and F, uh, FM24, F1 Manager, not FM, F1 Manager 24, the goal is going to be to keep the Around the Grid save running. I still have seven more seasons that we need to complete there. That, that's going to be a priority. We're going to keep on doing the one season challenges every now and again when I have time for them. And we're also going to do the maximum weight challenge, but you might see other series like get yeah, putting rookies in the Red Bull. That's been a requested series for a while. But again, for the time being, I'm going to try and limit myself to two, three series tops. The one season thing, I don't really see as a series. I see, as a, see it as one offs every now and again. Well, one off, two offs, three offs, you get it. I'm going to have to cut it up depending on what happens. Like last time around, Ocken decided to go three for three with Destruction Derby. But yeah, that's uh, going to be its own little thing. But for the foreseeable future, the goal is going to be to just have around the grid and maximum weight going. And once we finish one of, the, one of those, we might do, as I said, rookies in Red Bull. Some different challenges. That's going to be probably a bit smaller while we wait for the next edition of this game. Thank you very much for watching this series. Hope you've enjoyed. And uh, I do hope to see you next time. If you did enjoy this, Please do like and subscribe. Helps me out a ton. And uh, hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.